All right, this is a video a lot of you have been waiting for, and that is a speed comparison of using a waveform 4x4 MIMO antenna. This one is the Quad Pro antenna. I'm gonna hook it up to the T-Mobile G4AR gateway. That's the white one with the external antennas, but this is another one of the T-Mobile home internet gateways versus something like this Elsus Amplimax Ultra 5G unit. So this is a new unit that just came out and this one actually has a built-in modem and antenna that gets mounted outdoors um, for your, your testing. So you only have to run a Ethernet cable from the unit indoors for the 4x4 MIMO antenna. You do have a bigger cable bundle where you're running the four um, antenna cables from that unit into your gateway. So there's pros and cons to both of them. But really what people want to know is, is it faster or not? So that's what we're going to test here today. This Elsys unit does have a 5G modem inside of it. I believe it's an X62 version. So it's a good modem. It's not um, maybe the super latest and greatest that's in you know the, the newest cell phone that's out there. But it can do carrier aggregation. It has the 4x4 antenna built into it. It's all outdoor weather tight. It has some cool features um, that I have some other videos on. Now, I did just update the firmware that was released, I believe, yesterday, July 9th, but uh, today's July 10th that I'm filming. And so this has the latest firmware that's on there. For this specific one, I'm going to be using the T-Mobile Business Internet SIM. So it's just like a T-Mobile Home Internet SIM, but the Business Internet is a 100% uh, bring-your-own-device capable. I don't have to mess with um, any specific settings with a T-Mobile Home Internet SIM. It can work uh, in here, but they um, they do track the IMEI. I have a different video on that. I'll put a link to that right here. So you have to do a little bit of work um, uh, to get something like this to work with a T-Mobile Home Internet. But um, for me, I'm going to compare a G4AR, which I have up in my third floor loft, and I'm going to compare it to this. Now, it is actually downpouring right now. And in fact, my house lost power, but I'm on a backup standby generator so I can keep running here. So I'm actually gonna do this testing in the attic so I can stay dry and I'm not outside in a rain and thunderstorm uh, on my TV antenna, but I will do another video in the future where I have this fully outdoor on my tower mast as well. So for this comparison, they'll be side by side in the, in the attic and we'll see how they perform. All right, and everyone, I wanna remind you that this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. And I do want to encourage you to hit that like button on the video. That helps my channel grow. And also consider subscribing to the channel so you can get more videos like this. Okay, so now I'm in the attic. Sorry if there's a little bit of rain noise overhead from um, the shingles there. But here's the Elsys unit. I just plugged it in. You can see it says SIM1, says T-Mobile, and then show me N41, 69%, um, 5G. All right, so I'm gonna hit this little button in here in the bottom, and it beeps at me. Now what it's doing is it's showing me what my signal is. So 65, 71 there, if I rotate it, and it goes faster, you can tell that that's better signal. Now it says 88. All right, so right about there is the best. So now I can take my screwdriver and lock this in. All right, so press the button and then that completes that setup there. So now it's locked in. Now to connect to it, I need to hop on the ethernet. So I have the, um, I think it's in 50 foot cable ethernet cable they include i have that running into my third floor loft over there is where i have my g4ar gateway and that's plugged up to this antenna here and you can see here this antenna is actually at a slightly different angle so this actually helps me maybe aim that one a little bit better as well to make sure that one is precisely the same direction as these two now um, i'm not using these two units at the same time so no worry about um, you know any kind of interference between um, these, oh, you can see how many different antennas I have up here in my attic for testing. So let's go and do a speed test um, and see how these perform. All right, so here we are in the third floor loft. The attic space is right um, behind this hawk bird. Um, and in here is where I have my uh, setup with my router. I have multiple devices, as you can tell. This here is the cable that comes from 
the waveform 4x4 antenna. And now a quick note, it's actually the older 4x4 MIMO, not the Quad Pro. Performance is very similar, but I already had that one hooked up and ran. So that is going into my G4AR, but I just changed it to be uh, internal antenna. So mark that OK. And you can see without the antenna, I get weak to good um, signal here. So first thing I'm going to do is take my tablet. I'm just going to take that Ethernet cable off that's hooked up right now to the Elsus Amplimax. Don't mind the uh, the lion with the kids. But I'm going to take that Ethernet cable and plug it into here just so that it is a fair comparison. I'm using Ethernet, not Wi-Fi for any of it. Shouldn't make a difference. But let's test this G4AR stock up here. All right, so my Ethernet is hooked up directly to the G4AR here. I'm going to tell it not to go to T-Life just yet. We're going to stay in this one here. So let's go into more and go to cellular metrics to see how we're doing. So here we can see that we're using directional and omnidirectional internal antennas. I'm on B2 for my LTE, my 4G signal. And then you can see something like RSRQ of minus 11, signal to noise of 8. Um, so not great. N41 is using the internal directional and omnidirectional. We get an RSRQ of minus 10 and SINR, um, signal to noise ratio, with uh, 19. So the 5G one is better signal than the 4G one, but still not um, perfect. So let's do a speed test and see how it does. All right, so what we can see here is that the download is not that bad, but I have a poor upload, and that's really because I don't have a good enough signal to get back to the tower. If the tower is able to power through and get into here inside the house, but I'm lacking that upload capability. So let's do one more test there just to make sure that we're consistent. So that was a 203. The other thing to note here is also the ping. So the ping on this one is 33 milliseconds unloaded. We also pay attention to the loaded ping, which is the latency when it's actually moving data back and forth. So very similar download. And let's see if my upload kind of stays the same there. It looks like it is fairly consistent there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the external antenna on here. So I'm just going to flip on the uh, little display there to go from internal to external. All right, so it says connecting, success, OK. And now we see we have three bars. Sometimes it'll flip to uh, four bars. OK, so now on the external antenna, we can see we're still on band B2. My signal to noise did get better. It's now almost 13. RSRQ is minus 10 there, so better improvement there. And then same thing here for 5G. We have N41 still. We're now our signal to noise up to 25. Uh, RSRQ, I think, still the same at the minus 10. Those are the metrics I like to look at. But the one downside is this modem can do more carrier aggregation than just one L LTE and one 5G. But you don't find that out here in this interface. So uh, that's one downside um, to this gateway or actually all their gateways is you don't understand fully what their signal is. So let's do a speed test because that's really what matters the most. All right, so I'm using the same test server here, um, the sector link Flint. And you can see we're getting about a 20% improvement there with the download speed. And then let's see what the upload is doing. There's certainly much better improvement here. It looks like we're at 15, maybe 20, even more. So this is the waveform 4x4 giving me about 20% improvement in download with it in the attic and having 30 feet of cable. And then the upload, let's see, what's that, about 8x um, improvement, I guess a 7x improvement goes from 3 to 21, 22. So massive improvement for upload went from almost unusable to now very usable just with adding the waveform antenna. Let's do one more test just to make sure we're consistent. Okay, yes, indeed, pretty consistent there. Now remember that all your... Um, results will vary. For me, I literally have my gateway at the same height off the ground of the antenna. It's just over to the side inside a air conditioned space. 
but if I were to have my gateway downstairs on the first floor, I would get much worse signal actually. And uh, that's gonna vary based off your use. So this is really showing um, probably as small of a delta as you typically see with adding an external antenna. But let's hook this ethernet cable up to the ELSIS and see how it does. All right, so this is the PoE injector. So I have Implemax with the 50 foot cable power coming in, and then the LAN port going straight to my uh, tablet here. All right, so here we are in the ELSIS. I logged in directly to it. You can see I'm on T-Mobile, 84% 5G for the connection. All right, if I go to the system status here, we can see that it's showing me I'm on band N41 and N25. So it's showing me uh, two 5G aggregations there. So to me, this means that I'm probably on 5G SA connection which is something that you cannot do also on the stock um, gateways. You can do that on the third party gateways, but let's go in here and do a speed test uh, to test it. All right, right away I see my ping is a little bit quicker there at 22. All right, my download speeds were very similar right there to the waveform, let's see how the upload does and of course, we'll retest and make sure it's consistent there. All right, not bad. That's actually beats the waveform one slightly there on the download and the upload. Let's run one more test just to make sure. I do see the ping is, uh, again, right around 20, so that's where I really like to see. Sometimes I notice that's more to do with the actual modem and the gateway itself on how well it handles latency. So the stock gateways are not the best, um, especially if you're running a lot of um, devices through them. That's why I suggest adding your own router in there separately. So now again, we're down at 220. So that's very similar to the second run of the waveform, but my uploads even further improved at 38 now. So this ELSIS unit is giving me much better upload uh, right now. Let me do that one more time just to make sure I'm getting some consistency here. I'm gonna run that one more time, so third time with the ELSA's here, just to make sure that we're getting consistency because I did see that big spike in the upload there on the last run. Okay, there we go, it held true again. That upload now is almost double of what I was getting with the waveform one. The download's very similar. Um, in fact, it averages probably right about the same thing, maybe a couple um, maybe it's per second faster with the ELSA's. So, and then the pings are very good with this ELSIS unit. So this shows a lot of promise. Now what I do again is this ELSIS unit doesn't have Wi-Fi, it just has the one ethernet out. So you have to hook it up to something, you know, your own Wi-Fi router, uh, which is what I do. I have this router here, and then I have a, a mesh system that goes throughout my property to get that everywhere. So that's the one downside to the ELSIS unit is you have to um, add another device for sure. But this upload speed, it looks really promising. Now what I wanna do is get it outside as well. So I know it's kind of hard to see here, but this tower is my um, TV antenna tower, and I also can put my um, my antennas for my internet and this ELSIS unit out there. So that's what I want to do as soon as it uh, weather turns. Is I'm going to get this ELSIS unit outside where um, I can further test the performance of it without having to go through the roof and the shingles, which does hurt the signal. Okay, so that was kind of fun. I like seeing those different speed test results. Now, as always, these always have a couple of big asterisks on them. One is that the ELSIS unit was actually on 5G SA, 5G standalone. And that's what it does by default. Basically, it, it decides which one to connect to. SA, NSA, um, you can tell it to not do 5G at all, do only 4G. Um, and there is a way you can sort of force it to do 5G SA if you want to just uncheck all the 4G signals, but there isn't a way in the web user interface to actually tell it to not do 5G SA instead of do 5G NSA. The reason I say that is because the T-Mobile G4AR, all their stock gateways, as far as I know, they only do 5G SA. They won't actually flip over to SA even though they're capable of doing it because of firmware. And um, standalone is not available everywhere. Some people it's slower, but for a lot of people, you get better latency and you can have better speed with it. So as much as I try to make this an apples to apples comparison, put them side by side, all that kind of stuff, the G4AR was on 5G NSA where it had a 4G LTE 
anchor, that B2 that it had, whereas my LSYS unit was using just N41 and N25 as its um, connection, no, no LTE connection at all. So it does change things up. I have seen SA have better latency, which this proved out. I went from about 30 milliseconds unloaded um, with the G4AR to about 20 milliseconds unloaded with the LSYS. Now, if you look at the LSYS performance for the loaded ping, it's even a better story, especially the upload loaded ping dropped significantly. And I attribute that more to the actual device itself, not necessarily the connection but that indicates how well it's able to um, do multiple um, you know, things while it's um, sending data for the download test and doing a ping in addition to that. So that's just where I don't like the stock gateways um, from these ISPs. So now there is an actual way to force the ELSIS unit uh, to go to NSA, but it takes AT commands where I have to hook it up to my computer with a USB port. Uh, I talked to Richard at the Wireless Haven. You know, he's, he said, yep, he knows how to do that. He can send me commands. I opted not to do that for this specific testing because it's probably a little bit more complicated than a lot of users are willing to do. And the LSYS unit is trying to do the best signal that it deems is available. So um, that's probably the truth uh, of the matter as well. Now, they are working on updates. And this is actually why I really like working with people like Richard at the Wireless Haven, the team at Waveform, uh, the guys at um, Cheshire Tech Repairs. All those people are highly interested in these products and trying to get the best for you. And I know in talking to Richard, they are adding or planning to add things like uh, 5G SA, 5G um, NSA, and 4G LTE only options into the web user interface on the ELSIS. Uh, if there's one thing I would have to kind of complain about or critique, it is that the ELSIS web interface is pretty lacking. There's not a lot of options there, and some of them are a little bit, I don't know if you call them confusing, or uh, not very clear, but that's something they're working on. I have confidence they are going to update that. Um, I've already had two former updates um, done to my unit. I think I've only had it like uh, several weeks, two, three weeks. So they're making those improvements, and it, I like having the options for people to buy different things. So I'm pretty excited about it. I could go on and on and talking about it, but uh, stay tuned because I will be making more videos of this. I'm going to test the ELSIS unit outside all the way as soon as the rain stops, and uh, we'll get more um, performance changes for you um, coming up. So if you want to see something specific, please put a comment down below. I do read those comments if you have a suggestion of try this or try that. Um, if it's something I can do and I can fit it into my schedule, I will try to get that tested as well. So Thanks for watching as always and take care.